Dames en heren, ik wil u graag uh, het woord geven aan Patrick uh, Pauwen. Patrick will talk about uh, his uh, journey in implants. And I think it's a very interesting story. Uh, I'm, too sh I'm too chicken shit to do it. So there's always got to be someone that does it. Uh, Patrick has uh, a lot of implants. He will tell you about it. Thank you. So give it up, Patrick Pauwen. Hey. See you forward. <laughs> so uh, my name is Patrick Baumann. I'm 33 years old. Um, I live in Heerlen, in the far south of the Netherlands. Um, I'm one of the founders of uh, Hackerspace Xspace. And um, yeah, let's talk about uh, some, some disadvantages of uh, mechanical keys and locks. Um, this is the oldest known uh, lock and key. It was uh, found in ancient uh, Egypt. Um, and yeah, there are some disadvantages. Uh, you can forget to bring your keys. You can lose your keys. Um, uh, keys can, can break. Um, and yeah, another example, uh, this photo uh, might be familiar with some of you, but <coughs> This photo was taken at the hacker conference uh, Hacking at Random 2009 of a Dutch police officer. And the photo was taken at a distance. And based on the photo, um, there was a 3D model made of the key <laughs> and also printed at the conference. And it was, a, it was possible to unlock the handcuffs uh, using a 3D printed key. And, um, Biometric locks have also disadvantages. Um, everything you touch, you leave your fingerprints, and you can't change your fingerprints as easily as uh, changing, um, uh, for example, an implant uh, or or a, a pin code. Um, and yeah, this talk is about biohacking. Uh, there are different aspects of biohacking. Um, there's um, for example, 3D uh, bioprinting, um, there's uh, DNA, RNA hacking. Um, some people, they also um, have bionics or um, uh, some people also experiment with nootropics uh, where they change their diet or change their sleep pattern to, um, um, yeah, to get, a, get a healthier life. Um, and, and uh, they quantify uh, their whole life, uh, how they live. Um, my focus is mostly on implants. Uh, in my opinion, it's uh, <coughs> functional. Um, a bit of history about biohacking. Um, uh, Professor Kevin Warwick was the first person with a RFID tag implant. Um, in 2004, at the Bayer Beach Club in uh, Barcelona and also in Rotterdam, uh, the VIP uh, uh, members, uh, they had an implant, an RFID tag implant in their arm to pay for drinks. Um, and in 2005, Amal Krasa had first with two RFID tag implants, uh, one in each hand, and he used it to unlock uh, the car doors and doors at home at the office. Um, in 2010, uh, at the Chaos Communication Congress uh, in Berlin, there was a talk by Left Anonym called Cybernetics for the Masses. And that talk inspired me uh, to start with biohacking. And the following year, in July 2011, I put a small magnet in the back of my hand. And I attempted to put it in the fingertip where it belongs, but I didn't manage to do that. So I put it in the back of my hand instead. And, um, uh, one month later, in August of 2011, there was the Chaos Communication Camp. And uh, we were making toys at the camp. Um, it's basically a magnet with a battery and an LED tape wrapped around it. And instead of throwing it at an object, um, I stuck it to the back of my hand and I could walk around with a small LED. So I had both hands available uh, if I had to go to the toilet, for example. Um, so there's a small overview of um, non-medical implants. Uh, this is what biohacking is about. Um, I'll talk more about these in the next slides. 
Um, this is an uh, X-ray photo of my hands, and you can see some of my implants. Uh, you can see the magnets in fingertips and RFID tags. Um, so first about magnet implants. Um, the, the fingertips are very rich with nerve endings. They are very sensitive. And if you have a magnet in your fingertip and the magnet is near <coughs> a magnetic or electromagnetic field, then the magnet reacts to those fields. And the nerve endings in the fingertips, they, they pick it up. Um, so if I um, um, get my uh, magnet implant uh, near a strong magnet, for example, in the back of this flashlight, then the, uh, the magnet in the fingertip, it moves. And I can feel it uh, when it's moving. And when it's near an electromagnetic field, then um, it gives a tingling sensation. And it's also um, yeah, funny to, for, for parlor chicks um, to pick up objects like a bottle cap or, or paper clips or coins, uh, screws. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. These these uh, fields, magnetic and electromagnetic fields, they are invisible, of course, and we can't see them or or taste them, hear them, smell them. But uh, thanks to these implants, they um, yeah, they offer me uh, an extra sense, a uh, sixth sense. Um, this is uh, Rich Lee um, from Utah, from uh, the US. And he also has magnet implants, but he also has them in the chagas. It's the, uh, the flash in front of the ear. And when he wears a copper coil around his neck and the coil is connected to an amplifier, and the amplifier is connected to um, an audio source like a, a smartphone or MP3 player, and he can, um, he can hear those, those uh, audio. That's basically how headphones work. You have a magnet and a coil, and yeah. So without visible headphones, you can still hear audio and uh, could be useful. Um, this is the Circadia implant. Uh, it was worn previously by Tim Cannon from Grindhouse Redware. And this um, implant, it, um, it has Bluetooth and, and uh, battery uh, and sensors to measure some uh, body, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, basically collecting uh, data from the body, like body temperature or heart rate, uh, to send those, um, those uh, uh, metrics uh, to his smartphone. After uh, three or four months, the battery wouldn't charge anymore, so they took the implant out of his body out of his arm, and then they noticed that the battery was bulging, so they took it out on time. It didn't explode or leak. <laughs> yeah, there are some risks involved with biohacking. Yeah. <coughs> um, this is Rob Spence. He's a, a filmmaker, and at a young age, he lost his right eye, and uh, he has some prosthetic, uh, uh, prosthetic eyes, with um, one with a red LED and another one uh, with a wireless video camera, which he used in, um, in a filmmaking project where the camera would see everything he would see from his uh, point of view. And you could even uh, see in the video when he blinks with his eye. <laughs> Um, this is uh, Neil Harbison, and he is colorblind from, from birth. Um, and he has an implant in his uh, skull and with a sort of antenna that hangs in front of his uh, face. The, um, the camera, of course, can see colors. And what the implant does, it, it transforms the, the colors to an audio frequency so he can hear what color an object has. The Firefly implant, um, it's a tritium uh, lighting implant. It, it glows in the dark, sort of like the um, exit signs. Uh. Um, the North Sense, it's uh, created by Cyborg Nest. And 
It's basically a uh, compass. In my opinion, it's not an implant because it, it attaches to piercings and it's usually one on chest. Um, <coughs> so when you face north, then the, the device, it vibrates and you know which direction is north. But I prefer implants. I prefer devices completely under the skin. So I don't have to worry about forgetting them or um, Um, the North Star implant, it's also created by Grindhaus Wetware. Uh, it, it has, um, I believe, a Hall effect sensor. So if you hold a magnet near the sensor, then the five red LEDs, they light, uh, light up for 10 seconds and then they turn off again. Um, <coughs> and it also has a battery, so after uh, uh, a while, these also need to get replaced. And the next version, what they're working on, is that it will also have um, a gesture recognition. So for example, if you make a gesture like this, then uh, it will call an Uber or, 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 another, <coughs> or another action performed by your smartphone. Um, the um, Seismic Sense uh, implant, it's worn by Moon Rivas, the partner of uh, Neil Harbison. And um, yeah, with this implant, uh, um, when there's any uh, when there's an earthquake anywhere in the world, then she can feel it uh, through the implant. The implant is connected to uh, seismographs uh, online, and she uses this in performances when she's on stage. And uh, um, the more active an earthquake is, uh, the more she she moves on stage dancing. Um, now about RFID tag implants. Um, uh, right now I have uh, 10 RFID tag implants. Um, RFID, uh, radio frequency identification. Um, yeah, there are different uh, frequencies and also different protocols uh, that are used by different manufacturers of RFID um, access control systems. And this is the reason why I have multiple implants. Um, most of these implants, they're uh, the size of a grain of rice, like um, two millimeter diameter, 12 millimeter long. And the, um, yeah, the, the most common place to put these are is beti between the thumb and index finger, because there's mostly tissue here. There's <coughs> not many nerve endings or uh, veins, muscles. Um, so um, I have an XBT tag implant. It's a, <coughs> basically it's a PET ID tag implant, except this one also has a temperature sensor. So if I scan this implant uh, with this RFID reader device, usually um, used by uh, by an uh, animal doctor, a vet, or at an animal shelter, when it scans this implant I have here in my lower arm. Then it will um, display the unique ID number, and it also shows the temperature in the lower arm. <coughs> and those who who have been at the conference uh, three years ago, um, this implant was uh, implanted on stage by Amal Grafsta, by the manufacturer. And yeah, since this is a PET ID tag implant, um, uh, I also registered myself at a, a PET. Um, a registry database. <laughs> so if you look up the number, and <laughs> if you look up the number, then it will mention a uh, pet name, Patrick, and, and uh, uh, type of animal. I had to choose from a list, so I chose uh, primate. Um, <laughs> the breed, yeah, it was an added box field, so I filled in cyborg. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the XEM tag implant, um, this, um, it's a, also a low frequency RFID tag implant. And it's an emulator tag. It, um, it supports uh, different protocols. So um, for example, I can use this one uh, to unlock the car doors. Um, and I've made a, a small demo setup. Um, so this part is basically what I have in my car. Uh, this is the RFID access controller. 
Um, and here I, uh, I mounted an Arduino, but in my car I, uh, I use a relay. And this is a door actuator, so it uh, locks and unlocks the car doors. So if I scan this implant, then it locks and unlocks the door. Um, uh, and, and also, um, um, yeah, I also have uh, another implant uh, here in this hand. Um, it's the same implant except a different protocol because the manufacturer HID, that's, um, yeah, you'll uh, see it mostly at larger office buildings. Um, it's the same frequency but different protocol, so that's why I have multiple. And I put it in this hand so that I only have to um, roll down the car window, uh, stick my hand out of the window as soon as to um, open the road barrier. On the side. On the driver's side. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. otherwise I would have to reach up uh, all the way over the steering wheel. And, yeah. Uh, the XIC tag implant, it's, um, it's a high frequency uh, tag implant, same frequency as NFC uses. Um, unfortunately, my smartphone doesn't support this, um, uh, the ISO 15693 uh, protocol, but um, that's why I haven't implanted it yet. I have, I have one at home. Um, the XM1 Plus implant, it's, um, it's basically a MIFA Classic. Uh -huh. So it's a high frequency RFID tag implant and um, it's basically a MIFA Classic uh, like what was used uh, many years ago in the OV chip card. And this one, this implant also has a nice uh, feature. It, it's, the, it's called the Chinese Magic Backdoor. And um, at my hackerspace, um, they use, um, for the access control system, they use uh, MIFA Classic uh, access cards. And when I asked at the reception desk uh, to, um, to add uh, one of my existing implants uh, to their access control system, they couldn't do it, uh, um, probably because their, their system uses a four byte uh, UID. And, um, this NFC tag implant has a seven byte UID number, unique identification <coughs> number. Um, so I got this uh, MyFair Classic um, implant. I have one here. Um, and what's special about the Chinese Magic Backdoor feature is that you can change the UID number, the unique identification number. So it, uh, it makes it easy to clone an existing um, my fair classic uh, access, uh, access card to an implant. Uh, I used the Proxmark 3 device to, to clone it, to change the UID number of this implant. So yeah, um, never let anyone borrow your, your access cards because it can be cloned. Um, The XNT tag implant um, this is the first uh, implant uh, RFID tag implant that I have. Um, I have one here, uh, one here, and I use these uh, to exam for example to um, unlock my smartphone instead of entering a code because anyone can look over my shoulder and see what code I'm entering, and also instead of um, using fingerprints for what I've mentioned earlier, just uh, scan the tag and it unlocks the phone. Um, another purpose for NFC tags uh, is for um, some, some data transfer. Uh, for example, I put my uh, contact details uh, on this implant. So if you, if you have an NFC capable phone, um, and you scan my implant and you get my contact details, name, email address, uh, phone number,
Um, I can also use it to um, unlock my laptop, uh, where I made this um, uh, this little contraption. Uh, it's uh, Arduino uh, Leonardo Pro Micro and an NFC module, and I put it in an old uh, Nintendo Game Boy cartridge uh, case. Um, so if I lock my laptop and connect this over USB. Then instead of uh, entering uh, my password, I just scan this implant and it unlocks my laptop. Did that just point the password? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's uh, Arduino Leonardo. It uh, acts like a HID device, a human interface device. So it was stored on the Arduino? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we just need to steal the Arduino now. Yeah. yeah, and the uh, UID number of my implant. Yeah. No, because that's in the Arduino, right? You can just decompile the firmware yes. in there. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll talk about a uh, more secure uh, way. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, recently I um, um, also uh, added uh, two factor authentication uh, to my laptop. Um, where you have, have to enter an OTP code, one-time path code, um, which I use uh, this implant for, but I'll talk more about that later. Uh, so the <coughs> Flex anti tag implant, it's basically the same chip as, as the previous slide, the XNT, except it has a different uh, shape and size. Um, you can see here the this, oh, wrong button. This implant is uh, flat and rectangular, and most RFID readers, they also have this uh, shape, uh, flat and rectangular. For example, my smartphone. So um, if I scan this implant, uh, I don't have to search for the speed spot, um, for example, to unlock the phone or, or with this um, uh, electronic um, cylindrical door lock from China. It has a low power uh, uh, coil and um, some yeah when I attempt to open the door with this implant it, it's difficult to read but if I use the flex anti then I can uh, lock and unlock the door The Flex DF implant, it's uh, basically my fair dust fire. Um, I don't have this one yet. Um, yeah, it's more commonly used now for access control because it also supports um, cryptography. Um, there can be uh, applets installed in it. Um, the Vivo key. Uh, This is basically basically um, a contactless um, um, Java card, a smart card. I have a prototype here in my arm, and at the moment I have um, three uh, Java applets uh, running on it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But um, I use one applet to generate OTP codes. Um, for example, yeah, to log on uh, on my laptop. Um, I use it for the, the key pass password manager, um, where not only I fill in the passphrase, but also uh, three OTP codes generated by the implant. Um, or if I you know, log again to uh, online services. Uh, um, there's also a Java applet for PGP, for encrypting data, uh, encrypting emails, uh, signing. And since this is the uh, same type of chip as in uh, bank cards, hopefully in the future I can also use it for contactless payments. <laughs> Which at the moment, um, <coughs> at the moment in, in theory, I could um, order a second uh, bank card, uh, remove the chip from the bank card, uh, add a coil, and add coating to the uh, to the the chip, and then put it under the skin. Except there are currently uh, some limitations with um, uh, contactless payments. Um, if you have uh, multiple small transactions below 25 euros and you reach a limit of 50 euros, then you 
then the, um, uh, the terminal will ask you to insert the bank card into the terminal and enter a pin code, which is not possible, of course, if I have it under the skin. But um, yeah, hopefully in the future. <coughs> because now I, I know that ABN AMRO uh, Bank in the Netherlands, they also do a, a trial with uh, wearables, with NFC rings or wristbands, watches. So there should be an exception uh, for this. Um, there have been some uh, safety tests uh, performed on these implants um, to make sure they're safe. Uh, for example, people obviously ask, um, uh, isn't the implant gonna, going to break because it's a, a glass tag and um, yeah, if you throw it on the floor, it breaks of course, it's glass, but when it's under the skin, um, um, the tag implant is very well protected by the tissue under the skin. <coughs> so nothing happens if I hit against this table repeatedly. And there are some uh, some biohackers who also do martial arts or rock climbing, uh, deep sea diving. Um, another common question: um, uh, What if you know, need to go in an MRI? Um, yeah, I read an, an article online about uh, magnet implants. Um, that if you if you go in an MRI, uh, it doesn't feel comfortable, but they don't fly out of the skin. Um, and these RFID tags, uh, they have been tested in an MRI up to seven Tesla and nothing happens. So I'm not worried. Uh, methods uh, for implanting uh, these devices. Um, it depends on the size. Um, these RFID tags, uh, like the, the size of a grain of rice, they come in an uh, injection syringe uh, preloaded and um, you can order a kit online and it comes in a, the injection syringe comes in a sterile package and uh, you take it to a piercing studio for example um, um, for example piercing studio Utrecht uh, um, so in this uh, in the package that you receive from online um, you have the injection syringe in a sterile package, you have uh, a sterile drape, <coughs> a latex gloves, um, a band-aid, uh, a sterile gauze, chlorhexidine to clean the skin. And yeah, you take it to the piercing studio and, um, and they'll do it. They've, uh, they have experience with this. Um, the first one, uh, the XNT tech, yeah, I've, I've done it myself. Uh, I didn't, uh, didn't find a piercer uh, uh, ready to do it yet, but I did it myself and, and I improvised uh, because you need two hands for the procedure. You need one hand to lift the skin and you need another hand to uh, insert the injection syringe. So I used a clothes pack to keep the skin lifted. Uh, was sniper. Um, and then uh, if you remove this, um, I'm not going to do it now, don't worry. Um, but uh, when it's inserted under the skin and when the uh, syringe is retracted, then the, the tag comes out of the needle and it remains under the skin. And you can see it attaches to my finger. Um, and larger implants, of course, require a scalpel and dermal separator yeah. <laughs> and stitches. Um, implant coatings, um, these um, RFID tag implants, uh, they have a borosilicate or soda lime coating. Um, the implants like the Flex NT and the VivoKey, they have um, a parallel NCE coating. It's also bioproof. The um, magnet implants, uh, these four I have in the fingertips, they have a titanium nitrate coating. Um, uh, the first one I did myself in 2011, um, it, I used uh, Sugru as coating. Um, and it also happens to be bioproof. Uh, 
and I haven't tried with hot glue myself yet, but apparently it's also so, uh, bioproof, so the body doesn't reject it. Uh, um, there are some advantages and hardware limitations. Um, because these implants, they're uh, very small and um, they have a very small uh, copper coil uh, that acts as their antenna. You need to get very close to the reader, which is also an advantage because you can't uh, read the implants from a large distance. Um, and also, these are passive devices, they don't contain a battery. Uh, so. I don't have to worry about uh, replacing them. Um, uh, this device, it's um, uh, basically a field tester. It, it's also in, inside a glass, um, uh, glass cylinder. Um, and it uh, there are two versions. There's the low frequency version or the high frequency version. And this, uh, the low frequency version, uh, I recently had it implanted in uh, my arm, in my hand. So if a uh, low frequency RFID reader is near the implant, then it will light up. And with this, uh, uh, this field tester, you can. Um, it's it's basically manufactured um, to find out um, um, what the the maximum reading distance is of an RFID reader. So the closer it gets, the more it lights up. Um, and also the orientation, uh, um, because there's a coil inside the tag and there's a coil inside the RFID reader. What the best position is for the tag <coughs> to hold. Uh, because there needs to be magnetic coupling between those two devices. So it's saying do not implant this. Yeah, I know. It, it says that, but um, because it has a very thin wall, um, <coughs> I did it anyway. So. Yeah. And so far, it hasn't rejected or hasn't broken. So Yeah, but Amal says uh, not to implant this. Uh, so. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, uh, another common question, what about airport security? What if you need to go to security at the airport? Um, and yeah, at the moment I have 15 implants in total and I don't have any problems at all. Um, for a um, metal detector, um, I don't have any problems. Uh, there's too little metal in these implants, they don't detect anything. And also um, the full body scanner, it penetrates the, the, the clothing, but it doesn't penetrate the skin. So nothing is detected there either. Um, yeah, a common question about laws. Um, um, yeah, uh, as long as you experiment on yourself, on your own body, you're completely fine, but if you um, uh, put an implant in uh, another person, then it's uh, illegal. Uh, so that's why I suggest going to a piercing studio uh, to get implants done. Uh, not only for legality reasons, but also for, um, uh, well, they know uh, how to uh, modify your body. Um, um, I do have some, some demo videos um, that I'd like to show you. <coughs> uh, my car is parked outside, but, but here's a video, so we don't have to go outside in the cold. So that's my car, um, the door's closed, and if I scan my implant, Unlocks the door. That's the road barrier I mentioned earlier. Um, <coughs> uh, 
It's the same building, uh, so same RFID access control system uh, to unlock the doors. Yeah, logging on on my laptop, I already demonstrated this. But, uh. Uh, this is at my uh, home, so doors closed. And then office downstairs. That's the building at the, uh, yeah, where the hacker space is, uh, the former CBS building. Uh, it's a d little table. Um, um, it's a lock table from IKEA, and, and um, yeah, I show in the video. I put these videos on YouTube, but um, I mentioned in the video it's perfectly with size for switches and other network devices. Uh, um, and there, where you see the sticker, um, I put in. Uh, I also put an uh, Arduino and NFC module there. So if I uh, scan my implant, then, it, then the uh, RGB LED strip uh, powers off. And if I scan it again, it powers on again, which is nice for uh, Domotica uh, home automation. <laughs> um, and since each RFID uh, NFC target has its own unique ID number, I can program the Arduino that uh, if I scan one tag, then it lights up uh, green, or another tag, it lights up uh, blue or in this case, a rainbow pattern. And then in the video I show um, yeah, how I mounted this. It's not, <coughs> not that special. Just a hobby project at Xspace. Some NeoPixels and, and Arduino. That's it. NFC module. Um, back to the talk. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. So I guess you got your implants at different times, but what usually happens when I get my keychain out is that I spend like five minutes looking for the correct key. Do you have mm -hmm. the same thing with your implants? That you're just yeah. wondering like, what chip was it again that opens this? I use this, uh, I use my implants every day and on a daily basis. Um, I don't have this problem really. I, it's it just, it's like muscle memory. I know, uh, I know which implant I need to unlock my phone or, or you, you never got two at the same time where you sort of like had a, a adjustment period um only in the beginning uh, um, when i only recently <coughs> replaced uh, the cylindrical lock with an electronic uh, cylindrical lock at the beginning i had a short learning period uh, so adjustment period and um, instead of searching for my keys uh, oh yeah that's right i have this implant now so i no longer need the keys um, yeah, short adjustment period, but your brain uh, learns quickly uh, not to need these things anymore. Um, well, uh, one exception uh, for my car, I still need a key to start the car and also for the fuel cap. Um, 
I still need a key, but um, that's another project. <laughs> other questions? Yep. So I like this idea of <coughs> unlocking something with your hand, but I don't like like 10 implants. Hmm. What would you suggest as the most universal, versatile implant that you could reprogram or yeah, that works on most, most um, common systems? Yeah, most commonly, uh, I think NFC is getting uh, more and more common. Um, so I would I would go for the flex NT attack. Looking at the future, uh, I would wait for uh, the Vivo key. Right now, it's still in it's uh, still a prototype and um, it's still in development. Um, but since it's uh, yeah, it, uh, it has a chip, uh, NXP Smart MX2 chip. The final product will have a cryptographic chip, so um, I look at those two. But um, um, maybe you already use uh, RFID key fobs or access cards uh, um, uh, before you order uh, implants online. First, you need to figure out uh, which frequency my existing uh, RFID access controller uses. At, at your home or office, yep. and then um, yeah, find out the right frequency and, and protocol, and then order one. Yep. Yeah, but it's not like that. There's one universal. You, you need a specific one, of course, for every uh, for for every specific implementation. Or does or can it be solved with with software with the Vivo key? Like, that, of course, there are frequency differences, but mm -hmm. are there f uh, common enough frequencies that multiple systems could be supported by a single key or by a single um, I think, um, a, for example, HID, uh, the brand, the manufacturer, uh, I think they also have uh, multi-class um, uh, or for the uh, readers uh, where they support both uh, frequencies, for example, uh, both the low frequency 125 kilohertz and high frequency 13.56. And yeah, other than that, um, um, I mean, uh, at my appointment, uh, I can decide myself which of the uh, technology I uh, built into the doors or or in my car. In in this case, yeah, but it's like I don't want one feather lock in. Like if I, <laughs> if you have something programmable, it's like oh, this new fancy door opener which totally meets <coughs> my other requirements and I mm. can reuse it, my existing hardware instead of mm. <laughs> cutting myself again. Yeah, yeah, I would go for, uh, for NFC, uh, uh, so just a flex NT or X NT tag. Cool, thanks. Other questions? Yeah, over there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Would there be a possibility that you might get knocked out and someone clones your chip and um, enters your house? There's a possibility, oh, sure. Sorry? Cuts off your head. <laughs> um, well, I work as a security guard. Uh, <laughs> but but um, um, yeah, th there's a possibility. But uh, first, they also need to figure out where I live, uh, which implant I use for which door. Um, and yeah, uh, honestly, uh, when I get home uh, from the conference, uh, I can just uh, reprogram uh, some of my implants. Uh, uh, for example, this is a, a low frequency RFID emulator, and it has a keyboard, uh, keypad. Uh, I bought this device in China. Um, uh, it has a keypad, and uh, it can emulate uh, RFID tags. So with this emulator device, um, using the keypad, I can just enter. Um, a random unique ID number <coughs> and using a cloning device uh, such as the Proxmark 3 I can clone from the emulator device uh, to uh, to an implant so when I get home um, I generate a number um, clone and overwrite uh, the implant and also change the, um, the removed entry from the RFID access controller in my car and add the new number and you can do this uh, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, do you currently have one of your RFID tags uh, programmed for your hotel room? 
Um, no, uh, I don't have a hotel room. So ah. uh, tonight I'm driving home again. Ah. Do you ever uh, have? Uh, did you ever uh, encounter a tag that you couldn't copy? Um, uh, uh, no. And I know well, the um, yeah the MyFair Ultralight, uh, for example, the seven byte uh, uh, tags, such as the XNT tag. The XNT doesn't have a, a UID changeable uh, feature, um, and um, I, I can't clone that one yet. But using the Proxmark tree, I can also emulate uh, tags, high frequency or low frequency. So. I know you also do a lot of uh, do-it-yourself. Eh? You told us the first implants, hmm. you did it all by yourself yeah. because there were no tattoo shops or piercing artists that could mm -hmm. help you. Um, did you also did one of the bigger implants yourself? Um, no, no. I went to piercing studios uh, for this. Yeah, what's a, der a dermal? Uh, separator, how does that work? Is it just a knife, um, wiggle it around, or is it special? Uh, uh, first, an uh, incision is made with a scalpel, and then with a dermal separator, it separates the. Um, there are different layers of skin, uh, so it separates the uh, a layer of the skin, and so there's a pocket for an implant. And when the pocket is large enough, then the implant is uh, shoved under the skin and then the stitches. Uh, a sedation? Um, um, <coughs> at, uh, well, that's the legality problem. Uh, um, officially, uh, uh, tattoo piercing shops are not allowed to use uh, local anesthetic, like lidocaine. Um, what, what you can do, you can order um, the pain management kit from Dangerous Things. Uh, you can order it online and have a um, have it shipped to you, and then you can inject uh, the lidocaine yourself before you enter a tattoo piercing shop. So there's that loophole you can use, um, or you can use ice to numb the site, or or a lidocaine patch. Uh, okay. But uh, the, the yeah the small RFID tags uh, with the injection syringe <coughs> that doesn't hurt much. It's it's like uh, when you pinch uh, the skin uh, for a moment. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Um, other questions from people in the audience? If there are no more questions, I would like to thank you for your talk. Very well, interesting. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Hmm?